Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video is so exciting because I am finally revealing our master bedroom renovation that we did back in the fall of 2021. This has been a long time coming and I have been promising this to you guys for so long, but we're finally sitting down today to talk through it and to show you guys the whole tour and the whole room and transformation. This has been the most amazing project to do and to see this room completely change was so cool and we just felt so rewarded at the end of it because we absolutely love how everything turned out. So today I'm just going to talk through all of the kind of projects in a project and what it took to put all of this together and then at the end of the video like I did with my office reveal we will do a tour and I'll show you how I styled everything and talk through where everything is from and all that good stuff. But for right now, thank you guys so much for being here and let's just jump right into the renovation. This was one of the first rooms that I wanted to tackle because I feel like the bedroom is so important, especially because it's the last place that you are going at night, this is where you're falling asleep, and this is also the first place you're waking up in the morning. So I feel like it kind of sets the stage for your mood for the day and how you're feeling and I wanted a space that I could wake up and just be happy in and and really enjoy. When we first moved in, this room was very dated. <laughs> it is a little room off of the kitchen and it's in kind of a weird spot in the house, but it does have wonderful light. As you guys can see, the natural light is really great in here and it does face a really pretty like side field with gorgeous sunsets and stuff like that. So I guess we can't really complain much. But when we first moved in, we were really kind of uncertain about this master bedroom and whether it was going to really work for us if we wanted to relocate upstairs to a smaller room. But in the end, we decided, you know what? We're gonna make it work. So this is what it looked like before. There was this yellowy floral wallpaper everywhere, which at first I kind of liked and was okay with and then over time I kind of realized that it was quite damaged and it was just very dingy looking it made the room feel dingy um, there was no smoker or anything living here but for some reason it reminded me of like smoker walls <laughs> and so once I saw that and got that in my head I was determined to get rid of it and just completely redo everything so this is my vision board for the room the main goal was to make this room bright and airy and to make it feel bigger than it was because this room is quite small. It's roughly the same size as our room at our apartment. I think it might be a little bit smaller and it just feels really cramped or it felt really cramped at the time. So I wanted to do some really bright airy colors, a lot of white tones. And then we were also working with a few existing things like our bedding and our black wrought iron bed. So those were two things that we brought with us that we knew we had to make work in this room. And so I wanted to incorporate other elements and things that worked with what we already had. So the first course of action was of course to get rid of the wallpaper and also to get the air conditioner out of the wall. So there was actually an air conditioner in the wall um, when we moved in and it was not even one that was made for the wall. It was just a hole cut in the wall with the AC stuck in it and it actually dripped condensation out the back into our attached garage which was just a terrible setup and we knew right away that that was going to cause problems down the road we didn't want there to be mold or mildew or any of that bad stuff down the road so the first course of action was to get that out of the wall um, and to get the wallpaper off we used an industrial steamer and also this spray called piranha which eats away at the glue of the wallpaper that worked pretty well and then we realized that there was actually a second layer of wallpaper under the first wasn't that surprised by that but what we did realize then was that that second layer of wallpaper was underneath the trim pieces in the room so we didn't originally intend to take the trim off of the walls um, but then once realizing that there was wallpaper underneath it we thought you know what we need to do this right so we took all the trim off and got the rest of the wallpaper overall i would say it took probably three to four hours total to get the wallpaper off the walls and we did have some help from our friends on day two of doing that so it went a bit faster that way once that was all done though it was just so so much better already. 
The next step was then patching the walls because there was damage in some places. Some places it just could not be helped no matter how much we sprayed um, and carefully steamed that paper. It did pull off some of the drywall. So Brandon then went through with some um, spackle or mud or whatever and he <laughs> patched it all and sanded it twice. Uh, patched and sanded it twice. Uh, two rounds of that. And that really got the walls ready to be primed and all that good stuff. So our plan for today is to um, basically repair all the walls, spackle, sand them, uh, make them ready for paint, prime them and all that stuff. It'll be a slow process because there is quite a bit as you can see to repair and this AC unit behind me is also coming out and we're going to patch that um, and basically make it just a solid wall. This is just not a good design because um, on the other side of that is the garage. So there's like moisture that goes into the garage when this runs, not a good setup. So that's coming out and uh, we're going to try and get as much done as possible today. We have no other plans, so we will see how far we get. And hopefully this can only be a two weekend project as planned. Hopefully we don't have to go to three weekends. In the meantime, we were also planning out the accent wall for behind the bed. I knew that I wanted to do some type of accent on the wall, but I didn't want to do the classic like half wall board and batten that a lot of people do. And I didn't want to do the grid board and batten. That's really common. I wanted to do something a little cleaner and a little bit simpler just to both save money and save time. And so we ultimately decided to just do up and down boards across. We measured out how many we needed. We ended up needing seven from end to end. And we decided to go with one by threes because they were a bit thinner than a one by four. And I wanted there to be ample space in between the boards and for it not to look too chunky, if that makes sense. In this process, we also made the decision to replace the trim along the top of the walls with one by threes as well because the existing trim there was very um, junky, I guess is the word for it. It was kind of like, not wood, it was like this styrofoam type of material and it was breaking in places. It was not installed very well and there were gaps along the top of the wall where the ceiling tiles met the wall. Had there not been gaps, we would have probably just not done trim at all, but ultimately in the end, I'm glad we did it because I think it looks a lot more uniform this way. The existing trim in the rest of the room are all one by fours. So there was a little bit of discrepancy there, but you still have that kind of wide chunky look to the trim. So it all does look uniform in the end. The primer on them is pure white and we knew ahead of time that we were going to paint the entire room the same color and I will explain why in just a minute. We also prepped the boards for the board and batten wall and then it was time to prime the room itself. So the first primer that I used was the Kills Mold and Mildew Preventative Primer and I used that on the outer wall where the window and door are and also the wall that faces the kitchen. And that was because in previous years it was very clear that there had been water damage to this wall the window seemingly had been replaced and had prevented that for the future, but there was definite mold and mildew staining in the drywall. We were pretty sure that that was all no longer growing, but just to be safe, we used the Kills Primer. We also sanded down those areas um, and hopefully we don't have any problems with that in the future. So far, everything has been nice and dry. I did not use this primer throughout the entire room because it is very expensive and we figure we are going to probably need it in a future project with this house. This house is old. I'm sure we're gonna uncover other things in the walls in the future. So we saved that and the rest of the room, I just used a regular white primer. After we got all that figured out, it was time to prepare the trim to be put back up on the wall. So what we did was we sanded down all of the old trim pieces and then we went through with a primer from the brand Kills and what this did was it covered the knots and imperfections on the boards. Basically, if you don't do this prior to priming the board with regular primer, out, over time the knot will um, bleed through the paint, which had started to happen with the boards in the room when we moved in. So we wanted to prevent that for the future. We went over it with regular primer afterward and those were then ready to go in the room.
Once everything was primed, it was time to go in with the regular paint. I chose Bleached Linen by Bear, and it is a warm white. And this is the part where the monochromatic look comes into play. So we decided to paint the entire room, including the trim, the bleached linen. And that's because when you put a ivory tone like the bleached linen next to a pure white, what ends up happening is the pure white looks quite blue. I learned this principle when I worked in the bridal shop. It was the same thing with wedding dresses. A lot of brides would say, no, no, I want pure white. And they didn't quite understand that when you put pure white next to an ivory tone, it looks blue. It's so much different than people realize. Now, ivory has a million different tones. It doesn't have to be that yellowed ivory tone you're probably thinking in your head. The bleached linen that I picked is definitely considered an ivory tone, and I love it. I wanted something warm, but I also wanted something very bright that was gonna catch the sun in the morning and just be cheerful and fresh and clean feeling, and this color is literally perfect for that. I don't feel like it looks super stark because it definitely has that warm tone to it, so that was perfect. I fell in love with it the instant that I put it on the walls. The only parts that we didn't paint were the doors and the closet doors, and we definitely plan to do so in the future because they are painted white and there is a definite difference between the two. I'm just very glad that we decided to not leave the trim like that because it would have stuck out like a sore thumb. <laughs> I love the monochromatic look that it gives the entire room and it just looks so crisp and so fresh. After paint, it was time to install the lights. So I purchased these lights at Lowe's and they were I believe $50 a piece or so, maybe 40. They were not the original lights that I chose on my vision board. There was a double light for each side and they were out of stock the entire time we were doing this project. They are back in stock now and I've seen them in person and I do think that they would have been far too big for the space and I do like the more vintage feel of the ones that we went with. So I'm overall very happy. They do have a brass finish. I decided to go with brass for our metal color in this room and I could not be happier with them. Underneath them, Brandon installed each of us a switch and dimmer for each side of the bed, so it is our own personal light, and you do have to walk over to turn them on. Um, there's no master switch for them, but it's really not a big room, so that does not bother me. Um, but I love the idea of not needing to have a end table lamp, because I think that they collect a lot of dust and they take up a lot of space, and the sconces just work so much better. The last little project that we did was the fan. So this fan was originally in our living room and it was all white and Brandon wanted a fan in the bedroom, but instead of buying one, we just decided to flip this one. So I took all the blades off, spray painted it black and put the blades back on with the natural wood side down so that um, it matched the room a bit better. Overall, I really enjoy how it came out. I think for a uh, quick, like pr basically free fix, cause I already had the paint, it came out pretty good. <laughs> so after all of that, it was time to flip the furniture. And this part was definitely the longest. And if you guys have watched my other videos, you know that one of the pieces is still not finished. And I just decided to make this video and show you guys what it looked like beforehand. It will be finished in the future and I'll probably show it in another video once it is, but we just did not have the time before winter came to get it done. So that's okay. I'm gonna show you guys all the other pieces that we did. So this bedroom set is actually from the late 80s, early 90s, and Brandon's parents gave it to us. It is real hardwood, which is great for refinishing furniture. It's very well made. Obviously, it has lasted this long, and we were so thrilled to get it. The set itself, the pieces are not huge, so they're perfect for our bedroom. And uh, it came with two end tables, a tall dresser, and a low long dresser. There was also a mirror attachment for the long dresser, but we opted out of that because there really wasn't a space for it in this room with the window. We knew the dresser had to go under the window, so that was not gonna work. Um, but otherwise we used all the pieces. So the first two pieces that I'll show you are the end tables. So these are both just sanded down and restained early American and I then put a coat of matte poly on them. I wanted to do the poly on the tops of these just because they are going to get more wear and tear than other pieces because we obviously put drinks and stuff on them at night, um, our phones, 
there's just gonna be more things on them and I figure um, they'll hold up a bit better with a matte poly as opposed to what I used on the other piece, which I'll get to in just a moment. These end tables were not in the greatest of shape. They did have some wood rot and um, they just didn't sand down as well as the other piece did. So they were not my favorite project, but I think that they look so good now. We went with matte black hardware. This is from, I believe Home Depot is where I ended up getting it. Um, and the knobs have just a little bit of ornateness to them. And then the handles are just very, very simple. I did not want anything super complex. And we did get matching ones for the long dresser as well. And they'll be going on there too. But I wanted the matte black to play on the bed and the other things in the room that we already had that were matte black. And then the second piece that we refinished was the tall dresser. And I knew that I wanted this one to be the showcase piece. I wanted to have a beautiful accent piece in our bedroom and I decided to take the giant risk and go with a matte black dresser. I was so worried about this guys because this room, as you know, is not big. But I figured with the white walls, we could get away with something a little more bold. And so what I did was I decided to sand down the top. So actually my husband sanded the top, Brandon did that. He did a beautiful job. He sanded the top down and we then sanded the rest of it lightly and decided to paint it in Rust-Oleum's Milk Paint Eclipse. What you get from the milk paint is a very matte finish, almost a chalkboard style finish. Um, and I will say that I think that I could have definitely just gone with a regular matte black paint. The Rust-Oleum milk paint is very expensive. I did not use a ton of it. Um, even though I did three coats, I didn't need to use a ton of it, but I definitely think that I could have saved some money and gotten just plain matte black, matte black paint and still had the exact same outcome. <laughs> but I painted all of it. It took three coats to do it. And then we took the existing hardware and we just polished the brass with some steel wool because it was quite tarnished from long time of use. Um, but it did polish up great. And then we just put those back on. I wanted a little bit more of an ornate handle. And so uh, because these were all in great shape, they worked great just to keep them. The top we stained early American to match the rest of the pieces in the room. I think it's just a nice classic color. And then I finished it off with some min wax, furniture wax. Um, this was the first time I had ever used it and it gave such a soft, um, smooth finish on it. And I highly recommend using that if you're not looking for something like super high gloss or whatever. And it's a piece that's not gonna get a bunch of wear and tear on the top, as opposed to the end tables. Like I said, I used poly for that, but the wax was just so easy and you kind of just like let it sit and then you wipe away the residue and it leaves just this gorgeous finish. So I was really happy with how it turned out. I think it was like night and day. <laughs> and then for the final touch, I wanted to add a little bit of a surprise feature to it. I'm really into the idea of, of having either the drawers lined or having the side of the drawers lined. For this set, the inside is actually already um, like a newspaper print inside. Um, it's like the vintage newspapers. It's actually really cool. So we weren't going to do that, but the outside of the drawers were just plain. So I got it in my head that because the outside of this dresser was very masculine looking, I wanted a kind of pop of feminine on the inside. So I decided I wanted a black floral print. This is just such a fun story. <laughs> um, so I got it in my head. I wanted a white background with black floral botanical style print on top, vintage looking. And I had seen this print in a zillion places on the internet, but had never actually seen it in person. So we hunted far and wide for anything I could Mod Podge onto these drawers. We looked for wrapping paper, scrapbooking paper, wallpaper. We went to so many craft stores, we could not find the print I was looking for or anything even close. I ended up on Amazon and I find this wallpaper that's $30 for the roll. It's peel and stick wallpaper and it was the print that I had in my brain. And so I was so excited. But at the time we were planning our housewarming party. So I said, you know what? We have a lot of things to buy right now for the party. I'm going to wait and I will purchase this once the party is over. Brandon's like, are you sure? I think you should just buy it. And I was like, no, no, no. I'm going to wait. 
And so then when I went to Dollar Tree, I was actually shopping for the housewarming party and I ended up in the kitchen aisle. And lo and behold, right in front of my face are these drawer liner rolls of paper and they have the identical print that I have in my Amazon cart in drawer liner paper. And of course it's sticky because um, it goes in the bottom of the drawer. It's meant to be like pulled up though and like rearranged. So it's very convenient. And I could not believe my luck. And I ended up buying five rolls of it because I was scared that, you know, it's Dollar Tree. I'm like, how much am I really getting? I was reading measurements and I'm like, oh, I don't know how much I actually need. So I bought five rolls of it. And guess what? I needed one roll exactly to do all the drawers. So I spent a dollar technically on those drawers and I can't believe how good they look. They were my favorite thing to show people at our housewarming party. People could not get over the fact that I got that paper at the Dollar Tree. It was just like meant to be and I'm so glad I didn't buy it on Amazon because had I done that and then gone to Dollar Tree, I would have been so mad. Um, so yeah, it was a dollar to complete that and it just turned out so beautiful. That dresser is for Brandon. It is his clothes in there. Um, so I wanted it to be masculine, but I also wanted that little touch on the inside and we both absolutely love how it came out. So now I'm gonna give you guys a grand tour of the room and show you all of the other little things that we did and how I styled everything. And of course, if you are interested in any of the stuff in this uh, video, if I can, I will link stuff down below. Of course, there are like antiques and things in this video that I obviously can't send you a link for but there are plenty of things that I can so anything that you see that you're interested in be sure to check out down below to see if I have it linked um, so without further ado let's get into the tour okay guys we are in the first little corner of the room here this is the top of the bed obviously and the accent wall here as you can see, I have some seasonal decor up there, so that wreath will not stay uh, beyond probably March. Uh, normally it's just the blank up here. This is our bed. I'm just gonna lift this up to show you guys the headboard. So this is black wrought iron. We got this from Wayfair. I don't think it's real wrought iron, though. Pretty sure it's not. Um, it's much lighter than that, but it still gives that nice effect of wrought iron and I think it was around $400 or so on Wayfair and it is a queen. I got it on sale and it did come very quickly but this was right after we got married so I don't know if they still carry this specific bed but I can link something similar down below if you guys would like. And then we have our bedding so uh, this is the current sheets I have on right now again kind of goes with the wreath. These are our winter flannel sheets. These are from Better Homes and Gardens from Walmart and they are some of my favorite flannel sheets that I have ever owned. So do not sleep on that. They are fabulous. They're just a cream color with some pine cones as you can see, very wintry and uh, it's freezing right now in Maine if you guys didn't know. So we definitely need these. Um, and then we just have some white pillow shams. This actually bothers me so much because this is a my pillow and you can see through it, but we're just going to ignore that for now. The throw pillow is from Joanne Fabrics and I got it on sale. I think it was like 40% off, but it's just like a faux brown leather, kind of like a cognac color. I love this pillow. I'm obsessed with it. Um, I just think it ties it all together so well. It gives it like a nice little earthy tone going on. I will show you more of the bedding in just a moment, um, the lower part of it and everything. Um, but first I wanna show you the lights and the end tables. So this is the sconce light on my side and there is a switch here. So this is on a lower setting and as you can see, we have the vintage bulb in there. These again are from Lowe's and they are in a brass color. I love the shape of the bottom of these. I think they really do look very vintage. Um, and then I have a dimmer switch here so I can bring this way up or way down. This is the lowest setting. Um, they are just perfect and very, very easy. It's right here for me to flip on and off at night. So I absolutely love these. I love that we don't have to have lamps. And then here is the end table. So this one is mine and I have just a glass bottle. If you guys watched my thrifting video, I got that uh, that bottle and the one on Brandon's side at Goodwill. They were a dollar a piece. Mine has more of a floral pattern to it and his is more like a masculine striped. Um, but then I'm just gonna pan down. So these are the end tables here. Just very simple. I love how this turned out. 
I did have little trees on here for the holiday season, but we just recently switched back. So in there is just some dried lavender and some dried wheat. And I picked the, a bundle of that up at uh, Home Depot of all places. They actually sell bundles like that. And I was able to spread it out across this room and also my entryway. So it was a very good deal. I think it was like $8 for the whole thing. So this is the rest of our bedding from Perry Home. I will link it down below. It's all over the internet. It's their medallion comforter, I believe. I love the blue and white. I think it's super classic. And then I just have this deep navy throw on the end here. This doesn't stay here all the time because it does snag a lot. Um, but if we have company over or something, I will put it out. And I got this from Christmas Tree Shop here in Maine, and it was $10 in the clearance section. It's like a woven pattern. I really like it, and it does have some um, tassel on the end. Let me let me show you guys. So it's kind of like a waffled pattern. <laughs> Clearly, it picks up some dog hair too. Um, and then on the end, it's just got the fringe. So. Very cheap, easy little throw for the end of the bed. Okay, so we've just turned a little bit and I'm not gonna show you guys the first piece of artwork in the room that I actually made. Um, and it's these two giant frames here and these are actually our wedding vows. I'm over on my side of the bed, so same spot that we just were, my end table's here. And these are here. They are 18 by 24 and I made them in InDesign and then I had them printed at Staples as posters. Um, the frames are from Target and they were I believe around $12 a piece and it was about I believe $20 to have these printed or so it wasn't super crazy so overall a very cheap way to get beautiful like big meaningful art in the room I wanted something that was meaningful and it's just nice to be able to look over and see our wedding vows here so this is just like a close up. They are, the frames are slightly off in color from each other, even though they are supposed to be the same product, but it's not, it's more noticeable on camera than in person, I think. So I'm overall really happy with these and they're very meaningful and they fill this wall nicely. Okay, so now we're in one of my favorite corners of the room, or maybe the favorite corner of the room, I think. I think this is the favorite. So I'm right next to the vows, as you can see here, we just moved over a little bit. And right behind me is my mirror. So uh, if you watched my thrifting video from, I believe August, I picked this up at a yard sale for $10 and it's actually wood on the edges and carved and then painted this antique gold color. Believe me guys, I would love to have one of those anthropology mirrors with like the big rounded top on it or whatever. I love those, I think they're beautiful, but it was not in the budget. So we went with this, it was $10. Perfect. This room's not super big either, so I think a smaller mirror we can totally get away with just fine. And uh, I think it's just perfect right here. Okay, so moving on to the tall dresser. Like I said, this is my favorite corner ever. Um, so on top here, this is the early American top as I was talking about, and we have my blue and white pitcher. So I picked this up from a antique shop in a neighboring town to mine. It was $30 for the set, which was a killer deal. I don't know how authentic it necessarily is or like how old it really is, but I love it. It's the exact look that I was going for. I think it matches the space really well. Um, and then I have two brass candle holders that I got from Goodwill. They were a dollar a piece. I got the ivory candles from Amazon. I got, I think a 12 pack for $12 or something. They were very affordable. And then Brandon just has a photo from our engagement off to the side here. I already had these printed out, so we just stuck them in here. They were already printed and framed from our apartment. And then he has his cologne up here. So overall, kind of a balance between masculine and feminine, and I really, really love this spot. It's so clean and pretty and just makes me smile ear to ear every morning when I wake up, which is the goal. Okay, so unfortunately I'm gonna be very backlit if I try and stand here and show you guys this, but this is the low dresser that is unfinished. As you can see, it's very damaged. And this was the original color of all the furniture before we refinished it. Um, so this is my dresser. So this tray here came from Goodwill. It was $8, it was in one of my thrifting videos. And the second I saw it, 
I knew exactly what it was going to be. I knew it was gonna hold jewelry and perfume. So I have um, some of my most commonly worn jewelry. Both of Brandon's wedding ring rings are on here. <laughs> Ah, he's supposed to be wearing that rubber one at work, but he forgets. And then we've got our watches, and then I've got my perfume back there, and this little cake topper my mom gave me at my bridal shower, it was hers. So I keep that here because it's so special. Then behind it we have a blue glass bottle, again from Goodwill, it was $3, and I have just some of the lavender and wheat stuck in there. Super simple and pretty. And then over here we have my Willow tree statue. My mom got me that at my bridal shower as well. And behind it, I also have one of our engagement photos. The last thing I'm gonna show are the curtains, which are being very backlit right now. It's getting a little better. These are cream and blue, and they are shockingly similar to the print on my bedding, though these are from Walmart. They are the Better Homes and Gardens brand, and it took me forever to find curtains I like, and I'm actually really pleased with these. They were very cheap. I think they were around $15 or so. I will put them below if I can find them, but they are a dusty blue and cream color, and I think they complement the room so nicely. The black curtain rod was actually already here when we moved in, so that was very helpful not having to buy that. Okay, so now I am off to the side over by the exterior door, so this goes out to the yard, and right next to it, we have the last little piece of artwork that I wanna show you guys, and it is this triple wildflower print. So I printed all of these out on the same paper that I used for my uh, wedding invitations, and these wildflowers are all from the same pack of design, like flower designs that I used for them. They are like kind of botanical, and what I did was I bought the frames from Dollar Tree and then I moved the hooks on the back around with and super glued them back side by side instead of vertical. And then I strung some twine through them and hung them like that. So the idea is that they are supposed to emulate the pressed wildflower stuff that's really popular on like Etsy and things. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those, but they were not in my budget. <laughs> so I just went with this. It was so cheap to do. It was essentially $3 because I had everything else and I love them. And these can be switched out for pretty much anything over time. If I don't want the wildflowers anymore, I can do holiday prints or whatever. So I love how versatile this is and I think they just add such a nice touch. Okay guys, so that is it for my master bedroom remodel. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I love this room. It's my favorite room in the house right now because it is just so fresh and beautiful. I can't wait to see it in the spring and summer because obviously we moved to end of summer last year. Seeing it in the fall was gorgeous. The fall lighting was just mm, chef's kiss but I can't wait to have the windows open in the summer and have fresh flowers in here, hopefully. It's just such a beautiful room. We love it. We have zero regrets, and uh, we're excited to do some more renovations in this upcoming year in the future. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you for supporting my channel. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to my channel for more renovation and homemaking videos. I'm so happy you guys are all here, and I will see you all in my next video. <laughs> Bye.